Hi everybody. Uh, today we're we're talking about uh, how we represent floating point numbers in binary uh, fashion. So first of all, we need to make sure we we understand what a floating point number is. Um, so we'll start by looking at them in, in decimal. So you've seen these before. They're things like 3.1415, or you know we can do them in scientific notation. So something like 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Um, basically, it's anything with a general form, um, plus or minus sign, some number of significant digits, times 10 to an exponent. And really, the important bits here are the sign, the significant digits, and the exponent, because the times 10 part is kind of implied there. Uh, it's common to everything. Uh, and as you can see, in Java, we, we can write this uh, as the sign and the significant digits, followed by an E, followed by the exponent. So you've probably seen this before. We call this scientific notation. There's a variant called engineering notation. Um, all of them basically the same thing. So we, we have a sign, we have significant digits, and we have, a, have an exponent. As we'll see with binary, we'll have those three things. It's just in, you know, used as powers of two. So the uh, binary floating point formats are given by the IEEE 754 specification. IEEE is the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Um, that made the specification. Pretty much every modern programming language uh, implements it to, to some form, or some extent, um, and uh, most modern uh, computer processors and, and even graphics processors um, you, uh, will implement uh, either binary 32 and or binary 64 natively. Uh, so binary 32 is the 32-bit, uh, what we call the single precision format, um, and this is the one that is used by Java's float type. Binary 64 is the 64-bit version, um, that is, and so because of that, because it's double 32, we call that the double precision format, and this is what a Java double is. And if you've been wondering since 1301 why we call our floating point types double. Now you hear, now you know why. Um, it is the double precision version of a floating point. Um, some things to remember: uh, all floating point numbers are approximations. Um, if you had me for 1301, I I told you this, and uh, hopefully you, you heard it from from your other professors too. Never try to compare uh, two floats or two doubles for equality. Uh, using the, the double equal signs. Uh, if, if you recall in JUnit, if we did an assert equals for values of type double, we always did this third parameter, parameter that was how much error are we willing to, to accept. So if our expected and our actual are within 0 0.001 in this case, we say, yeah, they're, that, that our test passes because those are equal. Um, as I said before, most modern CPUs implement uh, one or both of binary 32 and binary 64 natively. Um, 6502, which we're using in this course, does not uh, because it's not a modern uh, processor. Um, and you'll notice the book discusses something called binary coded decimal form. That's uh, pretty much an outdated floating point uh, style, so just ignore those sections. Um, as I said before, floating point numbers are approximations, and uh, easiest way to do this is by demonstration. So I am going to do this with doubles just because it's easiest. And I'm using something called JShell, which is a cool little program that lets us execute Java code without writing, you know, classes and methods and stuff. So I'm going to do a double of x equals. 10 as a float divided by 3 as a float. And it says that x is 3 point, a bunch of 3s with a 5 at the end. I'm going to do y as a double. And um, I'm going to make it 10e to the 38. Sorry, 1e to the 38 on the top, which is basically um, a, a 1 with 38 zeros behind it divided by 3 with 37 zeros behind it. So effectively, this, these two things should be equal, 
but they're not. Mathematically, 10 divided by 3 should be equal to 1e e to the 38 divided by 3e e to the 37. But as we see, they are not when they're computed out uh, using double precision math. So if I try to do x equals to y, it's false. Even though those two things ought, you know, for any useful purposes, ought to be equal, they are not under a strict um, interpretation of equality. Um, and we have to be cautious about that when we write Java code or C code or any code that uses um, a, a floating point uh, data type. Because again, these are approximations. And this, uh, this slide is basically doing what I just showed you um, using JShell. Uh, a little bit more on float and double. Uh, in Java, any time we write a floating point literal, it is interpreted as a double data type by default. So if, if I were to write 3.14 in my code, it's automatically a double. If I wanted to interpret it as a float, I actually have to append the letter F at the end. So you might want to keep that in mind, might be useful later on. All right. Now to talk about how we can represent these things in binary. And we're going to do this with the 32-bit version um, just because don't want to be writing out 64 uh, ones and zeros. It's bad enough if we're, if we're doing 32 of them. Uh, but the concepts are the same whether you're doing float or, or double. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, all these pieces, a sign bit, some number of significant bits, and an exponent, and we're going to pack that into a 32-bit value. And um, roughly, it's going to look like this. So we have a number that is, again, in binary, 1.010011 and a bunch of ones and zeros after the decimal point, um, times 2 to some binary exponent. And we're going to pack those into a 32-bit value with a sign bit first, followed next by 8 bits for the exponent, followed by 23 bits of, of the 23 of the significant bits. And as you'll notice, we only store the bits that come after the decimal point place. There is always an implied fourth bit of precision um, that is a one in front of the decimal place. And I'll show in a later slide why we can get away with that. Um, it's a cool hack, cool trick that the, the designers of, uh, of this format came up with where they could store 23 bits of precision in only 22, uh, sorry, 24 bits of precision in only 23 bits. All right, so how do we uh, take this binary representation of a floating point and decode it into a decimal representation? So we're going to have a long-running example, and I'm going to ask some questions as we go along. So here's a 32-bit value. We could interpret it as a 32-bit integer, but in this situation, we're going to interpret it as a 32-bit floating point. Um, first question is easy. Which one is the sign bit? And if you answered 0, uh, this leftmost most significant bit, that's the that's the that is the sign bit, so you got that one right. Um, is this number positive or negative? It's zero, so it's positive. If it were one, it was, it's a negative, just like um, when we looked at uh, two's complement sign values. There's the answers. Let's move on to the exponent. The next eight bits are the exponent, and they're not quite what they seem. Um, they're actually stored as an unsigned value, but the exponent is signed. So we pull out these next eight bits and we um, convert them to an unsigned decimal. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and that is 30 in decimal. But we're not done yet. The next thing we do is we subtract 127 from this. That gives us negative 97. That's our real power of 2 here. Uh, this 127 is called the bias. So we, whatever uh, these bits evaluate to uh, in raw uh, unsigned, we uh, subtract 127 from that to get our actual exponent. 
So in this case, uh, when we decode the exponent, the answer is negative 97. Last thing we need to do is decode the significant bits. Everything that's left, and there should be 23 uh, bits there. Now, uh, first thing to, to note, and I, I mentioned this before, uh, only the bits after the decimal point are stored. There is an implied one in front of the decimal point, giving us 24 bits of storage. The reason we can get away with this is we can always adjust our exponent um, to sh make sure that there is a one right in front of the decimal point. So for example, what if our significant bits were 101, uh, 0011000 point, a bunch of other stuff, times, in this case, 2 to the third. We can take that decimal point and shift it this way, adding to our decimal to adjust for it. So we took our decimal point, we shifted it 9 to the left, that adds 9 to our exponent of 2. So again, some smart people uh, looking at the math uh, realize they can do this, and it actually makes for a more um, a, a higher precision uh, value when we do it that way. All right, to decode the significant bits, we also need to go back and look at how we can do this with decimal. So here I have good old pi out to uh, four digits, 3.1415. And what does that really mean? Three times one, which is 10, three times 10 to the zero. We move past the decimal point, we have a one, which is really one times 0 0.1, AKA one times 10 to the minus one. For the 4, it's 4 times 0 0.01, which is really 4 times 10 to the minus 2. The 1 here will be 1 times 10 to the minus 3. The 5 will be 5 times 10 to the minus 4. So hopefully you've seen this. I mean, it's this is coming back from, from algebra and whatnot, but that, you know, that's how it is. The, minus 10, uh, the 10 to the minus 1 position, 10 to the minus 2 position, 10 to the minus 3 position, 10 to the minus 4 position, and so forth. We'll do the same thing with, with binary, except now we're powers of 2. Um, so we're looking at this as 1 times 2 to the 0 there, which is 1 times 1. 1 times 2 to the minus 1. 1 times 2 to the minus 2 here. 0 times 2 to the minus 3. 1 times 2 to the minus 4. 1 times 2 to the minus 5. And what that becomes out to is 1 times 1 here, 1 times a half, 1 times a quarter, 1 times an eighth, 1 times a sixteenth, 1 times uh, a thir uh, 1 over 32. If we add all that up, we get 1.84375. And that's our answer if we decode the significant bits. Now we can put everything together. And we have positive, because it was a positive sign bit, 1.84375 times 2 to the negative 97. If we multiply that out, uh, which I've done here, it comes out to something like 1.1636 times 10 to the minus uh, 29, if we go to a more conventional decimal representation. All right, let's go the other way. So we have a decimal representation uh, with, you know, with things that might be after the decimal point as well. Let's convert that to binary. And again, we're going to start with an example here, 7,234.6875. Uh, um, the first thing we do is convert this part. And we're going to do it just like any other integer. Uh, and hopefully you know how to do that by now. Um, so, and I'm just going to without proof that 7,234 is 1111000010. Now what we want to do is convert the fractional part. Um, and just as a reminder, this is the uh, integer part from, or the whole part from the, the earlier slide. To convert the fractional part, start with the fraction, 0.6875, multiply by 2. 
So if we take that and we multiply it by 2, we get 1.375. We ignore the 1 for now and move the 0.375 down. Multiply by 2 again. That gives us 0 0.75. The 0 is important, so write it down. We take the fractional part of that to the next step. 0.75 times 2 gives me 1.5. I take the fractional part from that, 0.5. Multiply it by 2, I get 1.0. I have no more fractional part, so I'm done. Now I look at these whole bits here. Reading those most significant bit to least significant bit, I get 1011. If I add that to my uh, uh, integer part, that becomes the stuff after the decimal point. Pay attention to this, this side box here. This uh, example was made to um, work out nicely at four bits. In general, you're going to repeat this process um, 20, well, it, not 23 times, but however many times it takes to where you get 24 bits of precision, uh, counting those you pulled in from the integer. Once you have those 24 bits of precision, you stop. And you still, there still may be decimal parts that you haven't accounted for. That's where the approximation comes in. Eventually, we just have to stop approximating it as powers of two and, and hope for the best. Now, um, we have this unnormalized representation uh, with my integer part that represents uh, 7,234. I have my fractional part that represents uh, 0.6875. And I can naively write it out as, you know, all of this, I'm not going to repeat it, times 2 to the 0th power. Because 2 to the 0th power is 1, I haven't mathematically changed anything. And what I'm going to do is take my decimal point and shift it until it's... Um, you know, right here, between that uh, most significant bit and the second most significant bit. And as I shift it, I adjust the power of 2 um, accordingly. And then finally, when I, and then, uh, I pad to 23 bits so that I can store that in my um, final representation. Uh, last thing, we're going to encode the exponent. So we take the decimal exponent, which is 12. We add the bias to it in this case. So 12 plus 127 gives me 139. Convert it to an 8-bit bi binary value. And I'm going to even adjust this in flight and make sure that says 8-bit binary, because that's important. You have to pad it out with uh, zeros if, if necessary. Then we put it all together. Um, I have my significant bits. Don't forget, we drop the, the one point part. Um, we have my we have our exponent. We have our sign bit because it's a positive number. It'll be zero, and then we put those in left to right, um, sign bit, exponent, and our significant bits. A few special cases to look at. I forgot that there that, that uh, sorry I left that in there. Um, look at zero first. Um, there are two representations of zero, and I'm doing these as the the Java floating point uh, representation for the con uh, the uh, the constant. Um, we actually have a positive zero and a negative zero. Uh, in positive zero, it's easy. All 32 bits are zero. Um, negative zero is the same except the sign bit, the most significant bit, is 1. Um, functionally interchangeable, negative 0, um, double equal to positive 0 evaluates to true in Java. So you can use them interchangeably and nothing, nothing happens. And that's true of whatever platform you're on. A little more interesting, there are these uh, three values, positive infinity, negative infinity, and not, not a number. Um, so we have a particular bit pattern to represent positive infinity. The sign bit is zero because it's positive. The exponent is all ones. 
So we actually don't decode the exponent in this case. And then all the significant bits are zero. Negative infinity is the same, except we change the sign bit to one. We also have not a number. Uh, this is a situation where we've done some math and it gives us a, a, an invalid result. Um, possibly like dividing by zero or something like that. Um, the exponent, again, is all ones. It actually doesn't matter what the sign bit is. And then one or more of the significant bits are, are a one. Um, and if you don't believe me these things exist, if you go into Java, there is a uh, public constant inside the capital F float class called positive infinity. There's also one for negative infinity that, that goes with this one. There's also one for capital N, lowercase a, capital N, not a number, which uh, obviously goes with that one. Um, the capital D double class also has these in it as well. Okay, that's it for floating point. Um, again, if you have questions, let me know. Uh, we'll have some probably have some exercises on this in class later this week.